Hello, this is the next video in a playlist that I'm calling Parameter Estimation. And we're still on the sufficient statistic topic, and we're going to do just several examples, eight examples to be exact. So in example one, we let X be a Bernoulli distribution, uh, XI I should say, and it's a sample size of N. Uh, and this is the density, or the uh, probably mass function for a Bernoulli where x i is 1 or 0 and it's a 1 if it's an event and 0 otherwise. Um, the joint density so this is uh, the product of the n marginals and it ends up being this right here. Um, we just sum the exponents now, using the uh, Fisher name and factorization theorem, this piece here is a function of theta and the data, but only through this statistic, the sum of the xi. And then if we multiply it by 1, then this is the, the h function, where it's a function of the data by itself. So that says the sum of the xi is sufficient for theta. Um, and we could use x bar because uh, you know, it, multiplying it by 1 over n, you know, creates a 1 to 1 function for the data. In x2, we're going to let xi be binomial with parameters theta and known constant n star. And xi is from a sample of size n. So uh, the probably mass function for, you know, 1 xi is is this so it's a standard binomial where xi goes from zero to n star now since xi is you know we're, we've created a sample of size n the joint distribution for you know the x's would be the product of these marginal di distributions and we get this so then using the name and factorization theorem we can f find sufficient statistics this piece here is h it's a function of only the data and then this piece here is a function of the parameter and the data but only through this statistic here so that says x bar or you know the sum of the x size is sufficient for theta let's let x3 uh, example x3 so xi is Poisson with parameter theta, i is from 1 to n, so we're taking a sample. Uh, the distribution for 1 xi is this, the standard Poisson distribution. Of course, the x's are 0 or more, 0, 1, 2, 3, etc. The joint density would be the n products of these, you know, so we the f of x1 times f of x2 times f of x3 etc and we get this and so the name and factorization theorem you know this would be h of x because it's a function of only the data and then this piece here is a function of the parameter and the data but only through this statistic the sum of the xi so that's proof that x bar is sufficient for theta. Now, here's a note before we go to the next um, example. In each of these examples, the x or the range of the x or the support for the density or is uh, the distribution doesn't rely on the parameter, right? So here, Poisson is just you know, the x's are greater than zero. Their integers greater than equal to zero. There's no theta in the support. You know, it's not dependent upon that. But we could have written this function like this. And this will be important in our next example. And there, from there on. So note the support doesn't depend upon theta. So let's create an indicator function where it's a 1 or 0, and it's a 1 if all the xi are greater than or equal to 0, and, and 0 otherwise. Then the joint distribution of the xi 
is equal to this. So this this piece is like the standard Poisson distribution, the joint density, you know, probability mass function. And this is the indicator function. So this brings in the support. And so if, if there's an XI that is not an integer zero or more, then this is zero. And and, and so this is the joint density here where we bring in the support. Now this, the, the indicator function, is really only a function of the data, right? So it, there's no parameter in here. So this, this piece is like the new HI, and this of course is K, where it's a function of theta and the data, but only through that statistic, right? So now when we look at example two, uh, X, let's let XI be uniform zero to theta. I goes from one to n. F of XI, the, for one XI, you know, it's one over theta. And XI has to be between zero and theta. So notice the support depends upon theta. So we're going to, this is, uh, we're going to have to do something with this. So here's the joint density, so it's 1 over theta raised to the n, and all the xi have to be between 0 and theta, and this is for i equals 1 to n. So note that the support depends upon theta, so let's create an indicator function like this. So the fact that all the xi have to be, you know, between 0 and theta is equivalent to saying that the minimum has to be greater than zero, you know, x1, and the maximum, xn, has to be less than or equal to theta. So we've created this indicator function, so the, this, this density here that includes the support can be written like this. So it's one over theta the n, and then times uh, i1, you know, and but note that I1 is, is a function of both the, the, the parameter theta and x1 and xn. So thus, x1 and xn are sufficient for theta. Right? So, so that we're done. We've created sufficient statistics. But now the question is, can we condense it more? You know? So can we do better? The answer is yes. So instead of having one indicator function, we're going to create two indicator functions. So we're going to call it I2, and it's 1 or 0, and it's a 1 if x1 is greater than or equal to 0, and x3 is a 1 if xn, the maximum of our sample, is less than or equal to theta, 0 otherwise. So now we could have written the joint density like this, so 1 over theta the n, x3 at times x2. And, and so this is actually equivalent to this. So the support's still the same, the density, or the probably mass function's still the same. But notice that x2 is a function of only the data, you know, the x's. And then this piece over here is a function of theta, the thetas, and the data, but only through the maximum, the xn. So thus, xn is, in, if we use this approach, xn is sufficient for theta. And so what we've done is we've condensed our sufficient statistic a little bit more. So really, we only need to know the maximum, and we're able to estimate the parameter of theta, you know, as well as if we knew all the data or we knew, you know, x, the minimum and the maximum. And so this is sort of a topic that deals with what's called uh, minimal sufficient statistic. You know, minimal means we've, we've just crunched down the data or condensed it as, as much as we can, and, and this is minimal, right? Where it's only one piece of information that we need to know as opposed to two. Now, remember, the, the data itself are sufficient, and we've reduced it to these two, you know, the jointly sufficient statistics, x1, the minimum, and the maximum. But, and so these two are sufficient for theta, 
but they're not minimally sufficient because we've reduced it even more to just x in. So now example five, let's let xi be a negative binomial with known value r and parameter p. And so our, our probably mass function is written like this where the support is from zero, one, two, three. Now there's different ways to write the negative binomial density or distribution. So be careful with that. But now the joint distribution would be the product of these marginals and we get this. And so that says, well, this here is a function of the, the x's by itself. And this piece here is a function of the parameter and our, our x's, our data, but only through this sufficient statistic. So the sum of the xi is sufficient for p. Now x6, let's let f of xi be this density. Now notice that the support depends upon the parameter. So we're going to have to create an indicator function for that. So let's let i be 1 if the minimum, so the x1, is greater than theta and 0 otherwise, right? So if all the xi are greater than theta, that says the minimum has to be greater than theta. And then that implies all the others are greater. So we can really reduce it to x1. So the uh, joint density, and so... So maybe this should be a vector and not have that x1 there. So this is the joint density. So it's the product of all these marginals. And times this indicator function i. Okay. So here um, we can break this exponential into two pieces. Right then this piece is a function of the xi's by itself and then this piece here is a function of the theta and the data but only through the minimum x1 the order statistic first order statistic so that says x1 is sufficient for theta now in all these examples our parameter of interest is one dimensional you know, it lives in, in the real numbers. And the sufficient statistic, you know, we've, we've condensed that data to just a number, right? Each time, the minimal is just one statistic. But that is not always the case. We can have a one-dimensional parameter, but the minimal sufficient statistic is actually two pieces of information. And the next two examples are examples of that. So let's let xi be uniform between theta and theta plus 1. Now, th and that says that all the xi have to be between theta and theta plus 1, right? So let's let i1 be an indicator function. Well, the product of two indicator functions. So this is going to be an indicator function, so it's 0 or 1, and it's 1 when the minimum you know, the first order statistic, the minimum of our sample, is greater than theta, right? If all of them have to be, then the smallest one has to be greater than that. And times this indicator function that says the nth order statistic, or the maximum, has to be less than or equal to theta plus 1. Where, of course, the first order statistic is the minimum, and the nth order statistic is the maximum. So then the joint distribution is equal to 1, right, because the uh, marginal distribution of xi the, is just f of xi is equal to 1. So it's 1 times this indicator function here. Well, <laughs> this piece, you know, since there's really two pieces, this is a function of theta, but it's also a function of the data through the first order statistic and the nth order statistic. So x1 and xn are what's called jointly sufficient for theta. <clears throat> right? So this is an example where we can only crunch it down to two 
statistics for this one dimensional parameter. Now we're going to kind of briefly look at, at jointly sufficient statistics, but you know, so we're just going to informally introduce it here. Now let's let Xi be Cauchy with theta, uh, parameter theta. That means it has a Xi density of this, where X is a real number and theta is a real number. They're not, they're not dependent, uh, the support is not dependent upon theta. So the joint distribution is the product of these marginals, which we end up getting this. And instead of just writing 1 over squared, I just put it to the numerator minus uh, 2, you know. Well, there's no way to condense this further, right? And so th this is a function of theta and our data but it's the we can't reduce it so actually the data itself are sufficient for theta now maybe the most common way to write this is this so instead of just using the data itself we use the order statistics xi right so if we go from 1 to n we're just ordering them you right because product is commutative. It doesn't matter and associative. We you know it doesn't matter what order we multiply them in. So then we just create these order statistics. And so that says the order statistics are sufficient. It would be jointly sufficient for a parameter theta. And so this is an example where we can't create uh, you know a reduction of the data. Okay. Well, that's all I have for this video. Hopefully, you enjoyed that. I sure did. Please like the video and subscribe so you don't miss the next one. Thanks. Bye.